you do not understand white supremacy, what it is, and how it works, everything else that you do understand will confuse you. In all of these nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, anywhere on the planet, minute by minute, day by day, all of the time, all of the time. Alrighty, good morning and welcome to the Counter Races Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am the co host, Mr. Bobby. You can also call the show the CRCS. Now, to get in contact with the show, call this number 516 453 9921 and make sure that you press the number one button and you will go to the top of the line, and uh, Mr. Fuller uh, will uh, answer your question. If he is answering a question, you you just hang on, and um, you will eventually uh, be let in. You can also Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. Now, if you elect to use that, I want you to keep this in mind that there are at least 56 emails, or excuse me, gmails uh, before you, so you probably will not get on today. However, uh, I will make an attempt to uh, read your gmail at the time that it comes up, and then I will also notify you of the date and time when your Gmail is read, so that if you want to go back and look at the view the program or listen to the program, you you can in in your Gmail. Okay. With that being said, here I was going to read a a um, a Gmail, but I see we have some callers on the line already. So let me see here. Okay, let me go to – let me take a call first here. Let's go to Dante. Dante, let me see if I can get you in. Dante, good morning, and what is your question for Mr. Fuller? All right. Uh, good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Uh, thank you guys for doing this. My question is, you know, I've been pretty lonely since kind of getting into this, and I've been doing my best to be constructive about finding – other things I can do um, in order to kind of push forward the counter-racist code. And uh, this conference call seems really constructive to me. And my question is, are are there any other places where we can be active and participate in counter-racist communication? I know Dr. Francis had a program, but, you know, since she's passed, no one's picked up the torch there. Is there any place uh, that can be, I guess, a little bit more interactive in this show that you would recommend? Uh, Mr. Fuller or Mr. Bobby? I'll let Mr. Fuller answer first. Mr. Fuller? Well, I don't I don't know uh, anything that anybody says anywhere. Uh, you know, the, there are many radio programs and many Internet programs where people talk about racial matters uh, or any matter, for that matter, that has to do with what people are doing. Uh, codification and counter-racist science is all about just looking at whatever anybody's doing anywhere on the planet and trying to divide everything into one of two segments, constructive, non-constructive. And so all you have to do is just dive right in. I mean, uh, you can call in on any program, any radio programs. There are many uh uh, internet programs, and you can call in on all of them. I don't know of anything specific, but that's what I do because that's what the counter racist science is all about. Everything that everybody is doing, everywhere on the planet right this minute, mm-hmm. is going to fall in one of two categories constructive or non constructive. So all you have to do is just Call in and study. You don't have to dive, uh, segment it into what you might call, well, this type of program or that type of program. 
any program that involves people, anything that people are talking about. If you're talking about, you can have a program about how to cook a meal. Well, that meal that's being cooked is going to have a constructive effect or a non-constructive effect. And you can just call in and participate right then. And, and it goes right from there. Anything that people are doing anywhere on the planet involves constructive or non-constructive. Because anytime you're influencing people or people are influencing you in a constructive manner, then that is within itself counter-racist science. That's a problem solver. Anything that black people do that solves a problem without making new problems is all within the counter-racist frame of reference. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Fuller, let me uh, uh, and hold, hold hold on, Dante. Uh, Mr. Fuller, you okay. are on other radio um, uh, programs. Is is that correct? Or uh, other uh, uh, formats? Yes, but very few. I'm on the Carl Nelson program on WL. I had been on TalkTamedRadio.com. That's a internet program that people can tune in to, I guess. Uh, yep. I didn't listen to any of the other programs that were on there because okay. of a time constraint. But uh, yes, sir. that's where I was, TalkTamedRadio.com, okay. then and, Carl and, Nelson's program, and then KPOO, and then there's, uh, uh, I think it's KPOO, and uh, AM and FM radio. Okay. And okay. then it just... Uh, there, right now, I have just been centered just on this program, which is ProduceJustice.com. Yes. So this this is the, basically the center now. Okay. Of all where right. we are. I mean, okay. out of all the programs, so the other programs okay. you might say are sort of satellites of this yes. particular program. Okay. And for you, Dante. Um, uh, yeah, he mentioned uh, uh, Mr. Fuller mentioned uh, the Carl Nelson uh, program. You can also get him, as he said. There are shows that are on TalkTamedRadio dot com, but they are all old shows. No call ins, uh, you know, for that. Uh, but you can listen to the voice of him. He's all over. Mr. Fuller is all over YouTube. If you want to listen to some of his past shows, and also tomorrow. Uh, from 9 to 11, I uh, host a show called Point West, and tomorrow's uh, speaker is, will be Dr. Frances Cress Welsing. She mentions uh, Mr. Fuller and their work together and, and so forth, if you want to tune into that, and also Omer Johnson will be on there. So there are different formats that you may uh, go to and listen to. Uh, for tomorrow's format, uh, I do accept calls, but it's usually at the end because it's important that the voice of uh, Dr. Welsing be heard, just like it's important that the attention be focused on what Neely Fuller is trying to do on this show. But tune in, and you'll be able to get your, um, you know, whatever you need, you know, uh, glean information um, and so that you can function. Anyway, don't be a stranger, Dante, and thank you for calling so much, sir. Sure, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's see here. Okay, just listening here, just listening there. Okay, Mr. Fuller, let me do this. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. My bad. Let me see if I can get you in here. Okay, Mark, okay. good morning. And you are on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please, sir. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. It's a pleasure again to be with you. Um, it, it doesn't appear to me that uh, other people, as black people, that we have any clear objective that we that we desire. So, in order for us to to develop a code, should we not have a clear definition of where we're going and who we are as a people first? Yes, a clear definition, according to what I've written in the textbook for victims of white supremacy, is to be universal man in conjunction with a care mate, universal woman. Now, what are the characteristics of universal man and universal woman? If you go to the code book, there's a list 
of characteristics that we should have. And all of them are supposed to be in all nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, you should have a code of thought, speech, and action in order to have that universal man and universal woman that is constructive in every move that you make and everything that you say and everything that you do. Not just in the abstract like we've been doing for too many years, just having parades of black people going up and down the street talking about, I'm proud to be black. I mean, just running on empty calories. No. Like you're saying, a code is about everything that you say and do each and every day and making sure that everything that you say and do has a constructive effect, never a non-constructive effect. That's supposed to be the result of every move that you make, every word that you say. And that's that's a pretty tall order. It's never been done by anybody in the history, in recorded history. I mean, when you read all the records of recorded history, people having wars and going at each other and uh, people being dropping bombs and planning to drop bombs and shoot guns and that type of thing. Uh, most of history is about combat and hostility and doing and all of the constructive things are sort of like on the side of the road. So a universal man and a universal woman is what we need, something that we don't have, someone who's in, who is in tune with the most constructive things that are in the known and unknown universe. That's why I put that title on it in capital letters. Universal man, universal woman, doing universal things, all of which are totally constructive. And, like a lot of people would say that, oh, here we go. That sounds like real restrictive there. That sounds like something that's going to be real boring. That sounds like something that's not going to make people happy, going to take me away from having fun. No, we have been programmed, the people of this planet, to think that hostility and being destructive and just going around tearing up things and gossiping about people and all, anything, whole programs, TV programs are about gossiping about people and getting people uh, mad at each other and all that type of thing. And we have gotten so used to it, we think that this is normal, which it has become normal. But it is abnormal when you compare it with what should be. And in answer to your question, we need to have people who have great fun doing constructive things. That is possible. But you really have to work at it. Because everybody has been taught that fun is doing something that is totally non-constructive. Fun, we look forward to fun as being Oh, I gotta get off this weekend, and I'm a party. I'm a party like you won't believe. Now, what do we usually mean by that? Engaging in a whole lot of non-constructive activity, including when it comes to black people, gunfire. We include that in part of our fun. That's a part of our schedule. Pardon, snorting coke, and all that type of thing. Gossiping about people. I mean, even our jokes and whatnot is all about something derogatory, and we laugh because, you know, we're putting somebody down or something like that. We have gotten insanely used to that kind of nonsense, and we need to get out of it, detoxify ourselves, and stop being the poisonous people that the white supremacists has made us into. We don't want to duplicate the nonsense that they do in a very sophisticated manner. All righty. All right, Mark. Uh, thank you uh, for your call. And as I like to say, don't be a stranger. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me check my board, make sure. Okay. Oh, okay, here it is. Um, 
um, let me see here. Now, I don't want to butcher your name, so Artaitis, or uh, how do you pronounce your name? Yeah, Art. Artaitis. Okay, Artaitis. Okay, Mr. Fuller, Artaitis has a question for you. Go ahead, Artaitis. Fuller, um, I believe this coronavirus is the uh, biggest biological weapon, bloodless war ever created by the suspect white racism, white supremacy. Uh, they was giving away free food to all the churches and uh, all our urban communities, and the churches are giving that food to us. Then they started the marijuana thing. So they're putting the coronavirus and the marijuana, the free food, the uh, Newport cigarettes that they changed a year ago, and we have lost over 60,000 people uh, within the last 90 days. So uh, according to the code, uh, any any miss treatment of people is due to the suspect white racism and white supremacy. It's the biggest bluff this war ever created. Hello? Hey, was there a question? For, yeah, was there a question from Mr. Fuller? Yeah, 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 the question is that when somebody gives you a gift, they're giving you a gift if they're a suspect white supremacist, like they're giving the free food away to our schools, and the schools been giving it to us, and now we got kids that's got the corona now. Okay, Mr. Fuller. Well, yes, but that was—I think that was another statement. Uh, was there a question? Yeah, the question okay. is: When white racism, the white supremacists give our children um, food, and we picked it up, and it's something in that when they give you a gift, are they giving us a gift too? Like when we were so-called Indians, they gave us blankets and said, "Hey, chief, we got some blankets for you," but they came from the small park hospitals. Hey, Chief, we got some food, the food poison. Hey, Chief, we got fire water for you, the fire water poison. They're doing the same thing they did a hundred and some years ago with, with the cognac and with the uh, cigarettes that we smoked and, uh, um, and the marijuana that they legalized, and we got hundreds of thousands of black men and women locked up for it. Well, are, are you asking me, are they doing this, or are you telling me? Well, well, no, I'm not telling you. I'm just uh, saying is this, that possible that they're doing this to us? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, that's the question. If that's the question, is that possible that the white supremacists are doing this? Yes. That's the way that works. The white supremacists don't do anything that's not going to give strength to the system of white supremacy, no matter how it looks on the surface. If they're white supremacists, that's their whole reason for being. That's the only thing that they really care about. They're completely drunk on the idea of dominating and mistreating people because of skin color. That's that's the only philosophy that they have of the entire universe. They don't have any other philosophy. Everything else is just window dressing uh, to, or, or you might say, the envelope that that letter comes in. Hey, how does this, a white supremacist is thinking, uh, what has this got to do with dominating and mistreating people of color? That's that's their question. When anybody brings up anything in any area of activity, if if they're having a presentation on economics and whatnot, the white supremacist holds up their hand. They they go to sleep uh, at some point. They hold up their hand and say, does this have anything to do with dominating and mistreating people of color, because if it doesn't, I'm out of here, because you're wasting my time. I'm a racist, and racists spend their time dominating and mistreating people of color, and this is our fun, our glory, and our material comfort. And if you're not going to contribute to this, sir or ma'am, because many white supremacists are very polite, then what am I doing here? And in answer to your question, anything that a white supremacist has anything to do with, they're going to find a way, if it's not a way, to say, is this going to do harm where I can have some fun doing something against black people or non-white people in general? Because if it's not, why are we doing what we're doing? If we're distributing food 
if we don't do something in here that's going to gain prestige for us as white supremacists, it may not be harmful directly, but even if we just get prestige out of it, for saying, look how great we are, look how good we are, you people can't handle anything, you got to line up and come to me. Well, that's fun, and that's glory, and they get material comfort out of that, even if they have to go through a lot of trials and tribulations. So in answer to your question, anything that erases has anything to do with it. Somewhere in there is some poison for non-white people. Yes, the answer to the question. But if the, oh, white right. person, if the white person now is not a racist, then that person is really being helpful. But if they're racist, a racist, their minds are so gone. But it's so powerful because they are the most powerful people on the planet. Nobody is more powerful than they are. Okay. All righty. Um, Art, don't be a... Um a stranger here, but I see you have gone. Okay, I don't know this person. Is it Marion? Uh, let's see. Not, not exactly on my screen, but anyway. you have a question for Mr. Fuller? Hello? Yes. Uh, yeah, yes, okay, hello. go ahead, please. Okay. Is it Marion? Okay. Because it's not up on my screen yes. all the way. Yes. Okay, yes. all righty, go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, my question is on page 360 and 361. Of uh, uh, what, United, what, what Indepen- book? United Independent Compes- Compensatory Code System okay. Concepts. 360 and 361. Okay, wait a minute here. Okay. Okay, what is your question for Mr. Fuller? In Area 9, war and counter war. Um, so if we're at war and. Uh, I heard a lot of the callers over the past week or so talking about the coronavirus um, and how it could be war. On page 361, um, there's a question. If anyone in the known universe should be harmed, who should be harmed the most? And the the answer is... Yeah, at the top of the page. Yes, on Mm -hmm. the top of the page... And the answer is uh, that it should be done um, to those who, those racists who have been harmed the least. So according to compensatory counter-racist logic, if harm must be done to a person, it is correct to do the most harm to racists who have been harmed the least after harming, after having done the most harm. How would you determine uh, who those racists are who have done okay. the most harm. Let me, uh, Mr. Fuller, before you answer, let me say this. Um, Marion, you must be, uh, I guess, a new caller to the show. Um, this particular area, and I'm going to let Mr. Fuller answer it, that question, uh, be- because there have been a couple of questions this week that someone had asked me about the, this t- particular area. All I want to say is that in previous shows, Mr. Fuller has addressed this uh, a question uh, uh, or problem. Okay. Or, or Do you know, okay, maybe someone could tell me later uh, where I would find it, the answer to that one. Well, I'm going to let him answer, but I'm going to let him tell you why this is a, a very, um, I won't say difficult, but why he says what he says concerning this particular area. It's very important that you understand what he's getting ready to say. Mr. Fuller, go ahead, please, sir. Yes. Uh, In the ninth area of activity, it's about war, counter-war. And so this is a very delicate area to talk about. So on a, with the time constraints that we have on a program like this, uh, in answering questions about the war section, it may get a little confusing to the listener uh, because we have to cover a lot of detail, a lot of detail, and there has to be a lot of understanding about this section. 
So I usually elect not to talk about the war section very much on the air because it lends itself to confusion. And that's one thing that is extremely poisonous in counter-racist science, and that is just one ounce of confusion, particularly when you're talking about war, which is about direct violence. Direct violence. War is uh, the system of white supremacy is a war machine. And if you're talking about counter-war, which means inflicting counter-violence, it's not the counter-violence is not non-violence against the white supremacists. You must be very meticulous in talking about it, so it does so a person is not misunderstood. But in this particular question, I might be able to answer this question in a way that doesn't cause confusion. So I'll just look at the question on page 361 of the 2016 edition of the revised expanded edition, rather, of the textbook for victims of white supremacy that you can get by going to producejustice.com. And it says here, the question is, if anyone in the known universe should be harmed, who should be harmed the most? And the answer on page 361, within context, of course, is, according to the code, it says, according to compensatory counter-racist logic, if harm must be done, To a person, it is correct to do the most harm to those white supremacists who have been harmed the least after having done the most harm. This is the law of compensation based on compensatory counter-racist logic. In other words, it is correct to do the most harm to those white supremacists who have been harmed the least after they haven't done the most harm. In other words, some white supremacists do more harm than others, even though they're all part of the same army. They're all equal, guilty. But just like in war, which is what this is, it comes under the ninth area of activity. Uh, you put people on trial, and you say, uh, some of these people in these war crimes, they have what they call war crimes. White supremacy itself is the crime of crimes. It's the major crime of the entire universe. But you have some people who have just done more harm than others, More some white supremacists even though they are all equal to each other in the same army, you might say, because the system of white supremacy is made up of nothing but soldiers. Every white supremacist is a soldier, and they are part of an army. But just like in, if people are familiar with, quote, unquote, in World War II, right after World War II, what they call World War II, which it really wasn't, uh, there was something called the Nuremberg Trials, where Nazi uh, soldiers were put on trial. And they were put on trial not as just ordinary soldiers. They say they went way out to do greater harm than ordinarily is done. So they should be punished severely for what they have caused, much more than just what you call the ordinary soldier in the Nazi army. So that's sort of a hint of where this particular passage goes, that some people do more harm than others, even though if they're all in the same army, you can say they're all equally guilty. Well, this is true. But some kind of stand out as just being ridiculously guilty. And so that's what that passage is about. 
but it's best to read the entire chapter, you might say, the segment, Area 9 of War, Counter War, to get a greater contextual view of what this section should be about because it's very delicate and it's got a lot of ingredients in here that should be thought about and thought about and thought about and thought about before anything too much talk and definitely action should be very very cautious with everything in that war section because you're talking about endangering people directly. You're talking about war, direct war, because it's all war. All nine areas of activity can be called war in the system of white supremacy because the system of white supremacy makes war in all nine areas of activity, labor, law, their religions all geared up, for war against non-white people, every bit of it, and the sexual thing, they're making all, just going all out in total war against black people in the area of sex. It's just total. They're just making a mess of us sexually. And so much so that I have said that actually, they should never be forgiven under any circumstance for what they are doing to black people right now in 2020 sexually. They are messing with black people in the most horrible manner right before our eyes in everything dealing with sex. I mean, we are a sexual shambles. We are a sexual mess. And they're ramping it up and ramping it up just as much as they possibly can on television and on every radio program, TV program, any kind of program, religious programs, you name it. And this is war. It's just another strategy they have for being destructive to non-white people and laughing about it. Hmm. Okay. Marion, uh, thank you for your call, and don't be a stranger. Thank you. Okay. All righty. We have reached, uh, we're way past our break time, but for those of you who are just listening, we are, <laughs> or rather you are listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby. Now, to get in contact with the show, call 516-453-9921. And press the number one button when you do. That way you will go to the top of the line. And if Mr. Fuller is answering uh, a question, then um, you will be next when he finishes, provided that there isn't a call who had, has done what you've done. All righty. And then secondly, you can also Gmail me at the numero 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. And being that um, we take our callers first, the Gmails are backed up, so chances are I am not going to be able to get to it today. But whenever we get to your Gmail, I will read it, inform you of the date and time that your Gmail will be read. And trust me, all of them will be read at some point. Okay, the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Uh, Neely Fuller Jr. Uh, I believe it's, uh, is it Warren? Uh, uh, my screen is sort of messed up, but I think it's Warren. Is that you? Hello? It's hello? Yeah, I, I can't see all of my screen. Your name is not coming across, just the last three letters of your name. I just assume it's Warren. Yeah, um, yes, yeah, so I have a question for Dr. Fuller. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to make sure I got your name straight. My yeah. my screen is fouled up here. Okay, go ahead. Right. Uh Mr. Fuller, um could you reiterate why is it counterproductive for non white people who are fighting racism to call names and and uh denigrate other non white people? And to constantly highlight the faults 
of the black church or the black politicians? Because I think a lot of people still do not understand your code and what you recommend in your code to fight the system of white supremacy. Why is it counterproductive to call for non-white people who say they're fighting racism to call other non-white people names and to constantly highlight as the fault of the black community, black politicians and black preachers, regardless of what their faults are? Because it's counterproductive. It doesn't do anything to help to fight white supremacy. That's we long we have a long record of black people going at each other, but I kind of compare it to just having riots among prisoners in the prison system. Now here are a bunch of war time prisoners, prisoners of war, of which black people are all over this planet. Let's get that in focus. Every mm-hmm. black person on this planet in 2020 is a prisoner of war to the system of white supremacy. That's either true or false. And I say it's true. Now, people can debate it from there. But I'm taking the position that it's true based on evidence. Every black person on this planet called Earth is now, in 2020, right this minute, a prisoner of war to the white people who believe in and who practice the system of white supremacy. We are prisoners in every area of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. So prisoners of war sometimes if you look at movies or read books or anything like that, or if you've been in prison yourself, prisoners kind of mill around doing a whole lot of nothing, mostly, looking at each other and picking at each other and name-calling each other, and eventually, every now and then, getting in fights with each other. I've heard about it anywhere from Attica to Folsom, Every now and then, sometimes, I mean, every day, somebody is fighting somebody. But they're all prisoners. And it doesn't change anything about the prison. Their their condition in the prison doesn't get better because of the fight. So in answer to your question, why should prisoners of war, which is what black people are, non-white people, on this planet Earth in 2020, What are you going to get out of fighting each other and name-calling each other? I imagine right now, in what we call, what the textbook calls, greater confinement, places like uh, Angola prison in the northwestern hemisphere and whatnot, uh, somebody's cursing somebody out. It comes under the ten stops, and they fight, and they name-call. They call each other names all day long. And it's not what? It's not constructive. That's what? It doesn't help them in any way. They get some kind of of type of feeling from it. And then I I guess the people who do it are not even sure of why they need that type of feeling. Why do you need to name call someone to get through the day as a prisoner of war? As a prisoner of war, you're name-calling, and you're picking a fight because that's usually where the name-calling goes. So the code says what? Because the code is about what to do about things. Never, ever call anybody a name or a title that that person does not want to be called. Call everybody by the name that he or she wants to be called. That's what the counter racist code book says. Based on what? Logic, cause and effect, productivity, doing the most constructive thing. 
So you never call anybody a name under any circumstance that that person does not want to be called. Call the person by the name and title that they ask you to call them. Even if they change their name every two or three days or every two or three minutes. I mean, if you're locked up in prison and the fellow prisoner, or, or even if it's not a fellow prisoner, in the case of racism and racists, do you call a racist a racist? Only if the person says that he or she is a racist. But you can say, and this is not name calling, that you suspect that the practice is racism. That's how you describe it. That's how I describe it, according to the code, which is based on compensatory counter racist logic. That even a person that I suspect is a racist, I cannot call that person a racist unless that white person says, yes, I am a racist and proud of it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of white supremacists, they don't like being called racist, even though that's mm -hmm. what they are. Mm -hmm. So you don't call them that. But you can say, sir, ma'am, I suspect you could be a person who practices racism. And if the person says, are you calling me a racist? Say, no, no, ma'am. I'm not doing that. I'm prohibited from doing that, according to counter-racist code. It's against the code to do that, the name call. Mm -hmm. I'll call you by whatever name you want to be called, ma'am, sir. Mm -hmm. But I suspect that you could be practicing racism. Why? Because I have a duty, if I'm black, to suspect that if you're classified as white in a system of racism, I don't have an option, according to counter-racist science. I have a duty to suspect that you could be a racist mm -hmm. until you prove to me that you are not. Regardless mm -hmm. of who do you prove it to, you prove it to somebody else, and you prove it to the whole world, but it, you have to prove it to me as an mm -hmm. individual. That's under the United Indep Independent Compensatory Clause of the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. This is what you always use as your base. That's why I wrote the book. We need a code for everything, for every act that we do, for everything that we say. And we have a precise way of saying everything and of doing everything. That's what we need. That's the missing link. Okay. All right, Warren, uh, thank you for your call, and don't be a stranger, my brother. Thank you so much. Okay, um, it is at this particular time that we have Mr. Fuller uh, talk about his book, uh, which is um, very important. And just before we do that, Ivory, uh, Mr. Fuller uh, spoke about Area 9, uh, and he has spoken about Area 9. Uh, the the war section uh, He has spoken about it today And he has spoken about it On this program and other uh, Programs again uh, uh, He has uh, de you know Spoken to it very delicately Trying to be careful My suggestion is you might want to read the book And if uh, we get a chance For him at maybe at the end of the program Or something to explain uh, uh, Again in, in delicate fashion The in, uh, you know what what area nine really entails um then we can we can go over it because we don't want to or he doesn't want to uh make it confusing and right now in my estimation there are a lot of people and I'm not saying you are one of those people ivory but a lot of people are confusing that and that's one thing that we do not want to do but anyway, let me get to this. Mr. Fuller, this is the time that we designate for you to talk about your book, The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. Go ahead, please, sir. Yes, everything I've been saying on this program and on all other programs are based on what I have written in the textbook for victims, a textbook for thought, speech, and action for victims of racism, and, of course, racism is white supremacy, and white supremacy 
is racism. And all this is explained in the book itself. That there is no other form of racism other than white supremacy. You can't have two Supremes on the same planet or in the same universe at the same time. You either have white supremacy or you don't. And if you have white supremacy, there's no other form of supremacy of any kind. If you've got white supremacy among the people of the known universe. So the book is about getting rid of the system of white supremacy and replacing it with a system of justice and ultimately producing out of a system of justice and correctness a thing called peace through universal man and universal woman. But you can get the book by going to producejustice.com. And the book is directed to individual persons who are victims of racism. That's one of the supplementary titles. I used to call it a subtitle. But actually all of the titles that you'll see on the cover of the book are equal to each other. Uh, The first title being something that doesn't explain anything, so it's explained within the book itself. It's a long title. And some people, if I guess I walked into a bookstore and saw this title or saw it lying on somebody's coffee table, I would say the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept, what is that, some type of computer system or, or what? What is that, the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept? Oh, what, what is that? Is that about uh, 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 some type of rocket science? Uh, what? What is this? I mean, uh, code system concept, is that some type of new mail-in system or something? And then you move down to the center of the book, and it says a compensatory counter-racist code. Now we're getting somewhere a little bit because you say, hey, this has got about, you know, uh, you know, this book is about something dealing with racism. But then, in smaller print, it says, a textbook workbook and our action for victims of racism. And racism is explained in parenthesis as white supremacy. Now, that gets to what the book focus is about. It's for victims of racism. If you don't consider yourself a victim of racism, this book is not for you. But if you're a victim of racism, a black person who thinks that racism has an impact on your existence, then the book is about what you do about it and say about it on a daily basis as an individual person. You don't have to check with anybody. You just read the book and say, I'm going to do this because I think it works. And if it doesn't work, it's not supposed to be in there. Because that's what it's for. It's a counter-racist, codified guide Mm -hmm. that if you do it, it works. Yes, sir. For your benefit. But get it by going to ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com. And you pick and choose about what works and what doesn't. Yes, sir. Okay, um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a comment, and then uh, we're going to go to uh, Ben, and, and then Scott, I'll cue you in. Listen, it has been my estimation, I've been with Mr. Fuller for a few years, and I'm still learning my, myself, but it's been my um, observation that if you don't consider yourself a victim of what happened to you of white supremacy, then you're going to have difficult understanding the code and what Mr. Fuller is trying to to stress, you know, you we are victims of this terrible, terrible uh, system that has been uh, put up put upon us. And if you don't believe that, look at the Constitution of the, of this concept called the United States, the first twelve. Look at that. You will discover that it's not talking to you. But if you look at the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment of the Constitution, then it describes you. You have no rights. And then look at the Dred Scott decision, read it, and see what we're talking about. And then it'll bring back some understanding as your status, as our status as victims 
But if you don't look at it, if you don't see yourself as a victim, then you're going to have difficulty understanding that. Okay, let's go right, right here to Ben. Ben, what is your question for Mr. Fuller? Mr. Fuller and Mr. Bobby, thank you so much. I have a yes, VEQ Skipman. And I also have a- I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Ben. Ben? Hello, Ben? Okay, he got cut off. Okay. Sorry about that. Hey, Ben, call back and have my uh, call screener get to you so we can get to your question. There was some problem. Let's go to see if I can get Scott in here. Okay, wait a minute. We're buffering here. Okay, Scott, we got you on. Okay. Uh, Good morning, and what is your question for Mr. Fuller? Good morning. Um, uh, I have a number of questions, but I'll just start with the obvious one for Mr. Fuller here. (laughs) As I listen to this commentary, here's my first question. Is and I don't know if this sentence was a mistake or not, but probably not. You said white supremacy is the only form of racism. Okay. Is first of all, my question is: Is that correct? Do you believe that? Is that what you said? Yes. The white supremacists are the only racists on the planet. Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, Well, I have a follow-up, but go ahead. Go ahead. I'm I'm very curious as to. But I have I have follow up questions. Yes, I've been okay. told. Okay, and and answer so to the question. Supremacy, white supremacy is the only form of racism, according to you, right? I don't know what world you live in, but that's ridiculous. That's a, that's a very narrow minded, very oblivious to society statement. I am a fifty five year old man. I've lived all over the U S., all over Canada. I've lived in Europe, and I've also lived in Africa. Let me tell you something. There is racist inside of this racism inside of this country, probably a block down from me um, of any other culture against any other culture. It is not included in the definition of racism because Mr. Fuller says so that it's white against black. That's my comment. Okay, um, Mr. Fuller, um, in 1971. You wrote a statement that you mentioned just about on everybody, uh, on every program that I've heard you, uh, that I've been associated with you, and even before that. Is he going to speak to what I said? Or is he yes, he's going to speak it? to it. But, oh, okay. uh, but what, I'm, what he's getting ready to tell you is, is the introductory to why he feels the way he feels. He's going to answer your question, no doubt about that. Okay. He answers all okay. questions. All right, well, just an odd thing. But okay, I'm listening. I'll answer the question. Now, the question was, is there, uh, is there other forms of racism other than white supremacy? Is that the question? I'm trying that to understand the question. the question. I'm trying yeah, to understand really the, question. the question. That was the question, and you said yes after I re-asked the question. So in other words, well, wait opinion, a minute. I want to get the focus. I, I just want to get the understanding of the question. Is, is the question? I'll, the question is what I'll now? Rephrase. See, a lot was said, so I want to get the focus on the no, question. No, no, no. The question is very simple. Um, you said that the only form of racism is white supremacy, right? Which would lead me to believe, in your mind. The only form of racism is a white man exercising racism against a black man or any other race. But it's essentially the, it characterizes the white man as the offender. So that's what I pulled from your statement. I wanted to clarify that that's what you meant. Uh, uh, all, all I understand is that there is a system called the system of white supremacy. That's what I say, all right, based on people who classify themselves as white being dominant in all areas of activity 24-7 here in the year 2020 over the people who they classify as non-white worldwide. 
in all nine areas of activity. And I make that declaration right from the beginning based on what I see as evidence. I haven't what, seen what any other evidence yeah, your tr- that, your that contradicts that. Uh, uh, let, let, me be, let me be clear before we move on, before you ask me the other part. I haven't seen any evidence to the contrary that this is not <laughs> true. Any. Now, you are saying, if if I understand what you are saying, there is evidence to disprove that statement. Is that true? Absolutely, there is. All right. Uh, can you tell me where is evidence? I'll just ask I don't that. Have, listen, I don't have a, a, a mound of paperwork stacked in front of me. I can get it. There is evidence. One of the problems with gaining evidence like that is that there's no interest in getting the results. But I can give you empirical evidence about life in my life. I just came from working in Mississippi for a year and a half. I can tell you with unequivocal truthfulness that there is black on white racism in that state. Now, the reasons are many, and I'm not, I'm not speaking to those. But I can tell you it exists. I can tell you because I've been, I've been cut in line um, and right in front of a store, store personnel. Nobody did or said anything. Um, you know, I, I was robbed in front of a security guard. Nothing was said. Got to turn around and walk away. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I, I want to keep up with you, sir. You're saying you were robbed in front of a security guard? Sure was. Right at the mall. Okay. Continue, sir. Um, it, it, it's empirical evidence. Now, I played sports for a long time. You don't want me to go in. You don't want me to go to the black against white. Racism that exists inside of sports It's a whole other conversation But we'll just talk about regular society But I don't have studies The reason I don't have studies Is because on that particular subject They're not readily available they're, they're just don't, They exist But they're not available I've read some things online But nothing that I would You know That I would cite I'll be honest with you I just, I just haven't found solid evidence But I can tell you as a man living in this society, that racism exists in all forms. Um, so I don't own. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're moving too fast here, and, and and that's my fault. I can't keep up. But you just said what now? Racism exists in all forms. Racism all forms. exists in all forms. Okay, yes. continue, this sir. A, this is not a formula where white. Um, exhibits racism against fill in the blank. So I'm, I'm going to leave it there. You know, the pace of this isn't going right. So I'll leave it there. All right, Scott. Uh, thank you so much for your call. And don't be I would like to say this okay. uh, to, to the audience who was listening. This is the way that counter racist science is supposed to work. Now, the gentleman that just science. called. A science? What, yes, yes, sir. You, you, no, I'm saying, I'm saying your part, what you're contributing right now. I want people to hear this because this is the way the code is supposed to work. It's called VGQ. Know oh, sir, Anybody wait a minute. Let me, let me explain something, sir, since you asked me a question. You your goofy book explanation for a while. Go ahead, crazy Well, sir, you asked me a question. I just want the audience to be able, because we don't want confusion, to understand that what you are saying is super important. You are contributing now to what you see as the truth. And I want people to hear the truth because I am duty-bound on this program. And according to what I have written, to hear whatever the truth is, if it completely refutes everything that I have written, what you are revealing now to the entire world, if it refutes everything that I have written in my textbook. Let me ask you this question. When you did your research for the book, did you research exactly what you're talking about right now? Black on white racism, black on Asian racism, black on Mexican racism, 
um, Black Lives let Matter. Me, uh, let me pause here because did, I have did, to do this. You? Scott, um, let me pause it. here. That You're listening to good. the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby. And if you'd like to call into the show, you can by calling 516-453-9921. If you'd like to Gmail me, make sure that you uh, hit the, nut, the numero 7, Mr. Bobby, at gmail.com, and I will um, have a chance at some point to read your email or Gmail. Not today, probably. But at some point in the future, and I will inform you. When you call the number, make sure you, you press the number one button, and you will go to the top of the line. But this is the Counter Racist Code Show, CRCS, with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and I'm your co-host, Mr. Bobby. Okay, Scott, uh, go ahead, please, sir. Continue. Oh, excuse me. Okay, Scott, go ahead, please, sir. Continue. Yeah, but my question was, was any research done on... Um, that Mr. Fuller asked me about when he was researching for the information for this book, did he research black on white racism? Did he research black on Asian racism? Did he research black on Latino racism? Did he research black on Arab racism? And is it his contention that none of that exists? In answer to your question, uh, I don't know what you mean by the word research, but from everything that I have concluded, I have concluded, concluded, I'd like to underline this, that there is such a thing as white supremacy, and it is supreme over non-white people of this place called planet Earth in the known universe in all areas of activity. That is the conclusion I came to just by my existence on this planet. Now, I could, sir, I could be in error, and you are showing me and the rest of the world that I am, I guess, in error. If I understand what you're saying is correct. Am I in error about this? I believe you are, and you know what? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Any callers? Any call? I'd like to hear from everyone else. I'd like. Yes. Let Let me say this, and I want people to hear what you are saying. Where have I made the error? And you've gone into some detail about it. You start. You're saying about your experiences in Mississippi, and that something about. some type of robbery or something, and right. this is just part of your research, I guess. And so I want people to hear this because well, you don't understand it's research good. according to you. <laughs> Hello, okay. who am I talking to here? This is uh, that's Scott. But listen, I am going to have to move move forward. Uh, Scott, All right, we can sir. continue this at another another time. But thank you for your call seriously, and do not be a stranger. Very good. Thank you so Absolutely. much, Scott. Absolutely. This this gentleman may have the solution. Okay. Um, Mr. Fuller, before we continue, um, I know when we did the program on Talktainment Radio, there was not dot com. There wasn't a a time where when the program started off that you didn't do this particular statement that you made back in nineteen seventy one which you have done on this program. I don't know if you've done it today, but if you have that, well, I know you have it in in you. Could you uh, make that uh, th- that statement again? If you do not understand white supremacy, racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand, will only confuse you. Now, what That's do you mean by that? that I made. Well, what do you mean, I mean by that? that? I mean that the white supremacists are experts at causing confusion. So, therefore, I expect black people, non-white people, when we start talking about racism, to be confused about white supremacy. 
a lot of black people say that it's not true. White supremacy does not exist. That's all a figment of people's imagination if they say that it exists. And they are entitled to say that. As you know, according to what? According to Neely Fuller? No. According to science. People can say what they want to say and should be allowed to say what they want to say. This is how all problems are solved. So Neely Fuller shouldn't have any problem with some somebody saying, Well, there's no such thing as white supremacy. I don't have a problem with someone saying that. And I advocate that no one else should have a problem. Because then it comes down to, well, who are the supreme people? Who are the people who have the most power to tell other people what to do and they'd better do it? Who are they? Where are they? Or do they exist? Or is everybody equally powerful? Everybody on the planet has equality with everybody else. I mean, these are questions that should be asked and answered by someone who knows the answer, not someone who's guessing. Because Neely Fuller, and I'm going to say this to the entire world so that we don't add to the confusion, everything that I have written, I am guessing. I'm going to say that again. Everything that I have written and everything that I have said about racism, I am quote, unquote, guessing. But I think that I have, quote, unquote, guessed correctly. But just mm-hmm. because I think that doesn't make okay. it true. So okay. that means that someone who knows that I have guessed incorrectly should step forward and okay. say what the truth really is. And then we can, because all I'm really interested in, is solving the problem. Okay. Now that guess, if there is a problem, there might that, not be a problem. The okay. problem could be imaginary. That guessing that you just mentioned is that, or, or research is that based on the evidence that you have seen or in, in, been in, or encountered with? Yes, it's based on that. That's all. It, that's all it is, and that's why I just make suggestions based on what I think is evidence, but I could have it completely incorrect. And I need correcting yes. because codification, see, it's not about Neely Fuller and what he said. It's about either true or false. Something okay. is either true or it's false. Either white supremacy exists or it doesn't. There's okay. no wiggle room. And so if somebody says it doesn't, then that person presumably should be the person who tells the world. Neely Fuller, his, he's talking about his experiences. He doesn't know anything. I mean, my experiences have proven the truth, and I'm going to give people the truth. And I believe in people coming on this program, ProduceJustice.com, and revealing the truth, because that's what everything that I've written is designed to do to draw people out so that where they find the contradictions, where they find the non-truths being spoken, you don't let that go by coming from Neely Full or anybody else. So I invite this type of thing. Why? Okay. Because the truth can be found through the process of what? Questions and answers. Questions and answers. That's why okay. I like everybody to slow down so that we ask the correct questions and get the correct answers, because then we will break out of this cycle of who knows what and all like that. It's not personal. It's business. It's business. Let me say this. uh, For those who do elect to call in, please give my screener your name so that I can properly identify you. I'm looking at this board here, and uh, some people are just listening, and that's good. Richard, Richard has a comment. I'll get to you, Richard. But there are three ahead of you. Uh, let me do this. Marion, quickly, what is – oh, wait a minute. Okay. Marion, quickly, what is your question? This is your, your back again. What is your question? Um, basically, uh, when it comes to 
non-white people um, denying, similarly to the, I don't know if that gentleman was a white person. I think he was a white person um, that called Scott. But um, similar to his statements, I have heard that again and again from non-white people. Um, I would say that most non-white people probably feel that way, that Anyone can be racist, but we don't have the power to enact it. So there's prejudice, I guess, and racism. If if there's a difference, if you could expound on whether you think there's a difference between prejudice. I don't know if that word is in the word guide, prejudice. Um, if you could. So, so what is your question for Mr. Fuller? Uh, do you use the word prejudice? Is it just racism when when... Uh, non-white people or white people always love to deny that um, the system of white supremacy exists. Um, they're in denial about that, or they refuse to acknowledge it, or they simply don't agree that the system exists. And since this is a foundational concept, if we don't agree on reality and our experience of reality and how we use words, so um, is prejudice, the word prejudice, is that something that, a word that you use, and um, do you encourage that the use of that word? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to the core of your question. Your question is, do I use the word prejudice? Yeah, when, white, when... Is that the core of your point? question? Yes, 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 prejudice, prejudice. Can black people be prejudiced? Well... Well, anybody can use any type of word as long as they explain what the word means and what the word is supposed to do. Words are just right. tools. Like if you're going to build a house, uh, you say, well, I need a saw and I need a hammer and nails and I need some lumber, uh, some wood called lumber, and in order to build the type of house that I want to build. So... You need the tools to build the house. So words are nothing but tools to build whatever it is that you're trying to build, to get the results that you're trying to produce. So if a word person wants to use the word prejudice, I don't use it because it's too vague uh, mm -hmm. to prejudge. Mm -hmm. See, prejudice means to prejudge, and prejudge means you're going to judge before you judge? Well, that to me is kind of confusing. So I kind of steer away from that particular word. I just say constructive, non-constructive. That's the way I look at everything. Those are solid words. Okay. If something either okay, produces a constructive result or it produces a non-constructive or destructive result. That's throughout the entire universe. And keeping it simple like that, you get less of what? In my opinion, you get less confusion. Less confusion, yes. And, Marion, it is on page 298 of the Word Guide, the Word Prejudice. Thank you, and, don't again, don't be a stranger. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, according to the schedule, Ben, okay, uh Ben is back. Go ahead, Ben. What is your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bobby. Uh, thank you, Mr. Forder. I am very, very happy to just to listen to to, to Mr. Forder every week. Uh, Mr. Forder has changed my life personally, and this is just VGQ. I have read, read Mr. Forder's work probably three or four times, and I can basically um, – Court Mr. Folder or forward, and, and I'm just very very happy with the the impact the logic is is making in my life. I'm every day trying to become a quality person, and I'm actually uh, encouraging some of my family members and some of my closest friends to tap into Mr. Folder's work, to read his work, and understand the logic and follow the logic. And, and, and that's so that we can all become quality people. So my question for Mr. Forder is, because I'm from, I'm an immigrant from, 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 from Liberia, and I've been in this country for a while. And, and what's interesting, Mr. Forder, is 
a lot of people, a lot of the non-white people out of this country do not really understand the system of white supremacy and how it works, you know. And most of our people back home, they are completely connected to the flashiness of, of the system of white supremacy. Like you always said, the system is really good at making things. They know how to make things look beautiful. And our people have become connected to those things. And, and they have completely detached themselves from all of the, the, the destruction that making those things actually make and, and how making things actually destroy people in the process. So me as a, as, a, as a person from the continent, what can I do or what is your message for most of the young, the young Africans, non-white people, who have come to this country and have understand the system at a certain level. What can we do to change the mentality and the mindset of some of our people who do not yet fully understand, who have yet to see the world on a whole bigger scale and how things are and how our people are oppressed, Mr. Fodor. And, and just to kind of expand and I will cut up here real quick, it's Mr. Fodor, do you know that some of those, some of our African countries, some of the countries that want to develop, they want to, they have the engineers, they have the smart people, but some of the machines and the equipment that we need for development, the white supremacists cannot sell those machines to us. We cannot buy them. Even if we have the money, they're not going to sell it to us. This is how deep the system of white supremacy works. And people have to understand this thing. So, Mr. Fuller, I rest my case. And I'm happy to encounter your word. Very, very happy. All righty. Um, okay. Uh, okay, Ben, uh, uh, thank you for your call. Uh, I didn't detect a question in there necessarily, but thank you for your call. And as I always say, uh, don't be a stranger, Ben. Thank you so much. Uh, this is what I'm going to do here. Uh, let's see, Richard? Oh, yeah, here we go. Because uh, there's so many that want to call. Hey, listen, when you call in, kind of make your comments just a, a question a little short so we, I can try to get them all in because, believe it or not, your call is important. Let me go to – oh, wait a minute. He's Okay, here we go, Richard. Uh, there you go, Richard. Okay, Richard, go ahead, sir. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, Richard. Go ahead. All right. Uh, uh, good morning, first of all. Good morning, uh, Mr. Fuller. I'm going to give you the condensed version of this. Um, that Scott phone call is exactly what I deal with at work. Um, people, they'll say, oh, well, blacks are racist towards this person. Blacks are racist towards No, it's not. No, we're not. All we're doing is we are being we're, – we're counterproductive against racism. And people are bringing that up as racism. And first of all, I notice how people are easy to um, call anybody a racist. I don't with anything that Neely Fuller has written is the fact that people will say racist and blanket it. I don't blanket it. I think racist is an elite section. Um, everybody else is a bigot. Unless you have power enough to control the economy of another demographic, then you can be a racist. Other than that, you're just a non-wealthy white bigot or a non-white bigot. Yes, um, people of color can be bigots, but I don't think people of color have enough clout, power, and wealth to be called racist. Um, I think Scott was totally confused. He's mixing right into uh, the system of white supremacy, and I'm going to finish it up with this. To me, white supremacy is an elegant ball gown, but you just can't wear the ball gown. You need accessories. You need a clutch. You need an ankle bracelet, a tennis bracelet, um, you know, earrings. Those are the other races, and those are Scott. His comments did nothing but fuel the fire of racism, white supremacy, and that was my statement. Okay, Richard, thank you for your comment. Uh, don't be a stranger. Uh, let's see here. Uh let me see here. Okay, Scott, got you back here. 
and then Ivory, we're going to get to you. But Scott, go ahead. You're you're back on. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, to, to the caller, specifically the last guy. Let me tell you something, um, Tyrone. I am not confused about nothing. There isn't anything I'm confused about around this this topic. I think that you're confused. And certainly Mr. Fuller's confused, although i got to hand it to him. Anybody that's written a book, I've never said, I've, I've never heard him say anyway that, hey, man, you know, didn't, didn't really, there's no bibliography. This is just what I think. And, and that's cool, and I appreciate his ideas. He's obviously, not obviously, but he's been around the planet a little bit longer than me. So, so he's seen some things. And that's where most of my, quote, unquote, evidence comes from is my life. I don't particularly take another man's viewpoint on things. One question I would have for Fuller, and I discount that, that caller. I, I don't know where he's at, what, what position he is. I, I have questions for him. I do. But one question I have for Mr. Fuller, does this system, this book you're talking about, this method, can it help white people? Why does it just to have to help okay. black people? Mr. Fuller, can this – can this help I white didn't people? hear again, and this is, I say to all of the listeners and callers, I, I consistently have this fault, that sometimes I do not comprehend the question that is being asked. So sometimes I need some help from Mr. Bobby and sometimes from the caller, him or herself. So okay, that's Scott, just, you know, that's just one of my huge flaws. Yeah. I do not okay, grasp it. The okay, question. Scott, sometimes. go ahead and ask that question again. Can this what? Can Mr. Fuller? Can a can a white person get any value from your book? I would hope so. I, I would hope that there is that possibility that some white person can read the book, and those who practice racism can think about it and ask themselves. Are they racist? Do they practice racism? And then going from there to saying, well, I'm going to do everything that I can not to be a racist and not to ever do anything of harm to anyone simply because of the color of the person. And that would go a long ways if the person takes, makes that decision. But if he makes a decision, well, oh, yeah, well, he's describing me, and uh, I do some of these things, and I'm going to continue to do them, well, then that will be the result. But in answer to the question, it is possible, but I would only know that it's possible or that it's functional or that that is happening if a white person calls in and says that they have read the book and that it helped them to understand what they are doing because they weren't aware of it so much, and then uh, helped them probably to try to replace it with what racism should be replaced with. And that would be what? A system of justice, which means guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. It doesn't get any better than that for anybody, anywhere, anytime in the known universe, according to what I have written. It doesn't get any better than that. Even when people weave their way through all of the different types of non-justice that are on the planet, the whole idea is to replace non-justice with justice. Any white person, non-white person, male, female, old person, young person that can contribute to that action is indeed doing what this book is supposed to be helping to produce. Okay. All right, Scott, thank you again for your call. And as usual, don't be a uh, stranger. Okay. Uh, let's go here. She's been holding for, I mean, uh, Ivory. Ivory, let me see. Gotcha. Okay, Ivory, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, Ivory. Okay. So I just want to say that, I, well, I was going to say that I love Mr. Fuller so much, but according to the word, God, 
We have to use words like affection, affectionate, caring, concerned, considerate, cooperative, help, helpful, and supportive. So I want to use those words to express my emotions toward Mr. Fuller. Also, uh, right now I've been focusing a lot in Area 9, war and counter war in the book, because I feel like it's, it's, it's the times right now, our president that we're in right now, um, crucial times that we're in right now. I just wanted to ask Mr. Fuller, is there any one thing that you want us to take out of this area, number nine, that you probably didn't get a chance to fit it in your book or you probably wanted to add it to, but you couldn't? Because I, I heard you on a couple of occasions say that it you don't think it's the best book, even though I think it's the best book, and I'm sure a lot of us do. Um, but is there anything you want us to really get out of area nine um, that you didn't get to put in your book? Well, there could be whatever people can think of that would be of okay. constructive value. And I'd like mm-hmm. to say this about all of the areas of activity, and not just the ninth area of activity, but the first area. They're all interactive. Economics is connected with war. What is economics? Mm-hmm. Time and energy, energy, according to logic, mm-hmm. the use of time and energy. So people use time and energy fighting about this right. and that and other. People are fighting all over the world. And uh, sex is a form of war, depending on mm. what you use it for. There's a new word, I, I don't think it's, well, actually the word has been around, but it's being popularized now. It's called weaponized. I, I kind of keep my antenna up for words that are <laughs> becoming more and more popular. Recently I've been hearing about a word called weaponize. In other words, uh, I guess from what I see so far is that you can weaponize anything. Like a hammer can be used to hammer a nail. A hammer can also be used to hit somebody in the head and kill them. All right? yep. So you can weaponize a hammer. Uh-huh. Or even when you're hammering a nail, if you're building a concentration camp barracks, you're weaponizing that hammer building and building something. But a person mm-hmm. walks by and sees you putting up a building, say, oh, that's going to, somebody's putting up a shelter. That's constructive. That's going to really help somebody. But when they find out later that that hammer and that nail and that piece of lumber was building a concentration camp, to exterminate people, then mm. that hammer and that nail and that lumber was weaponized. See, so it's the same way with the nine areas of activity. You can weaponize all of those areas. You can weaponize mm. labor. You can weaponize politics. You can weaponize, if you want to use that term, and that this is a term that's not in the, in the word guide, in the mm-hmm. compensatory code. But you can use any term to do what with it you want to. So mm-hmm. just how people should always explain the words that they use. Be very careful, very meticulous about every word that you use. That's a part of counter racist codification. Because otherwise, if you don't, if you don't explain it in detail, you're going to get what? The one thing that you don't want in communications ever is what? Confusion. 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 Okay. Yep. Thank you so Hi, much. Marie, thank you so much for your call, and don't no be problem. a stranger. Okay. Yes, God bless you. All right. Thank you. Uh, listen, I'm going to do this a little early there for my technicians and board people. I'm going to give the station ID now so we can try to get as many calls in as possible. You are now listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am the co-host, Mr. Bobby. And now, if you'd like to get in contact with the show, you may call 516-453-9921. And be sure to press the number one button, and you will go actually to the top of the line. But if Mr. Fuller is answering a question, then you'll just have to follow through, follow, fall in line. Also, you can Gmail me. At the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B O B B Y, at gmail.com. Chances are your email will not be read today, but at some particular point in time it will be read. 
and we can go ahead on with that. But yes, you are listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I'm your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and here we go. Uh, let me say this, uh, and thank you for uh, holding it. Thank you for listening, um, Mario and Wayne. I did receive your emails, and um, both of your comments are uh, are good. Uh, this is called constructive dialogue because Mr. Fuller has indicated that the answer to any uh, 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 problems is to ask questions. And a lot of people are jumping on Scott and they're making their opinions and all that. All that is necessary for us to come to uh, some type of understanding, some type of understanding so that we can proceed uh, in that. So whatever words that you may use and however it may come across, it's still necessary. It's still part of it to get where we need to be so that we are not, confused. All righty. Let's go to Amun. Amun, you are on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Yes, actually, um, I speak with uh, many people um, in my relative group and neighborhood since we have time um, during this uh, COVID um, isolation about racism and white supremacy because of what we're experiencing in the news. And what I hear today is what Mr. Philly rightly pointed out is confusion. I think a lot of people in our dialogue when we speak about racism, those of us who are using counter-racist logic use a compensatory meaning of the word racism, racist, or race. And other people are using the dictionary form of racism. So Mr. Fuller always gives us the definition of racism, which is white supremacy. Most people don't use that definition of racism. They don't see racism as white supremacy. And so in the book, in the Counter-Racist Guide on page 309, he gives us the definition of race, racism, racist. And it says, use this term. During the existence of white supremacy racism, use these terms only to apply to those white persons who practice white supremacy racism either directly or indirectly, in any area of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, counter war. Do not use these terms to apply to any persons in the known universe who are non-white, black, brown, beige, yellow, red, tan, etc. Specifically, those persons who are classified as non-white and who function as non-white. In his notes, in Mr. Fuller's notes, during the existence of white supremacy racism, and according to compensatory counter-racist logic, the only purpose for the existence of a race of people is to practice racism, mistreatment of people based on the factors of color and or non-color. During the existence of white supremacy racism, the only form of racism based on factors associated with the color or non-color of people. The conclusion is is the only functional form or practice of racism is white supremacy. And while other people of different colors mistreat one another, the only functional form of racism that impacts everybody's life globally is white supremacy. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question before we let you go. That was in the uh, counter-racist code word guide. Is that correct? The compensatory counter-racist codified word guide. Okay, good. Yeah, we have to identify that so that people know exactly where that is at. Because when you said page 309, I've, I went to the um, uh, the uh, revised expanded edition, but then when I turned over to the compensatory counter-racist codified word guy, I found what you were uh, saying. Okay. Well, yes. uh, thank you. Ver- yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, unless Mr. Fuller has a response to that. Mr. Fuller, you have a response to uh, uh, that, what I'm going to Well, only that what he read from was the book that I yes. say that people, uh, you know, I 
I advise or suggest people purchase by going to ProduceJustice.com, and that book is written by me. And everything in it is just a suggestion, and people can read it and say, like one of the, and I want to say this to the entire world audience, the first, one of the first people to read my book was a person that I worked with on a job. And he took the book and read it and came back and told me, uh, Fuller, you know what you got here? You got nothing here. You got absolutely nothing here that will help me do anything. You wrote a nothing book, and I don't find no use for this book at all. You just wasted your time, and I wasted my time fooling with it. And he went on and on and on. And when he finished telling me what he told me, I told him, like I'm telling the entire audience now, I'll take this re-opportunity to repeat to the entire world audience what I said to that individual at the time that he told me this in a very objective, non-emotional way. He was just making his evaluation. One person talking to another, one-on-one. And he said those words, and my reaction was the reaction that the code calls for me to have. That's exactly the way this book is supposed to work. If you read it and you see something you can use, use it. If you don't see anything you can use, and if everything in this book, because it's just one book, even though it's basically two volumes, it's just one book. Everything in this book is designed for the reader to be able to use to solve his or her problems if he or she perceives him or herself to be a victim of white supremacy. And I can't reiterate enough so that we eliminate the confusion and the perspective arguments, because it's never supposed to be an argument, according to the code, between people of this planet. Never an argument. Conversations, yes, but never an argument. Arguments are designed to win arguments. Conversations are designed to solve problems. So this book that I have written is supposed to be able to solve people's problems who have these problems. Now, for those who don't have these problems, the book is not for them. I cannot reiterate this enough. And so this gentleman that came to me, one of the first people who read the book and said the book means absolutely nothing to him, and that it was a waste of time for him to spend even reading it. I thanked him, because that's exactly the way the book is supposed to work. And I would like for everyone to read the book, and if they come to that conclusion, which means I don't have a problem. I don't have a race problem, period. And this book, or for anybody else, if that's what they want to say. That's exactly the way this volume is supposed to work. I thank the gentleman for his response. Because if he doesn't have a problem, that means he solved his problems. And it doesn't get any better than that. That's the thing I want to emphasize. Mm -hmm. I would like for the whole world to be able to say instantly, I read Neely Fuller's book from front to back, I understood everything that he said in it. And what he said was that the book was for victims of white supremacy, and I don't have no problem with white supremacy at all because it does not exist, and I have solved all of my problems, and Neely Fuller doesn't know what he's doing, and I bless him and pity him, feel sorry for him, 
that he has a problem, and I hope he solves it and gets his mind straight because I don't have a problem. Racism doesn't bother me because it doesn't exist. I would like for every person, really, and I say this honestly, to come to that conclusion right now so that they will never even never even mention racism. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, because they don't have a problem. This is about oh. problem solving. If you don't yeah. have a problem, why read a book about problem solving? Okay. That's not logical. Not logical. Okay, so we can get the book by going to ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com. Okay. For those who have problems. For those who have problems. With racism. Okay. Victims. Yes. Okay, let's go to Sean. Sean, you're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Good morning, Mr. Fuller, Mr. Bobby. Morning. Good morning, sir. I have a I have a VG2, and this goes okay. to the call of Scott. Either Scott is an agent for white supremacy or he's confused about the concept of racism. He's referring to being prejudiced and being biased. You can be prejudiced towards another group of people and you can have bias towards another group of people. But racism is a concept and a construct policy. There's no place on this planet where black people have the power to deny white people, Asian people, Mexican people, Latino people, Native American people, the power or the privilege to buy home, schooling, food, health, medicine. We don't have that power. So when that, with that being said, we cannot be racist towards other groups. Sure, we can be biased towards other groups, and we can have prejudice towards other groups, but we don't have the power to pass policy to stagnate economic growth for other groups to engage in um, prosperity in America or abroad. So Scott is calling. He's constantly calling back, challenging Mr. Fuller, saying that, oh, black people can be racist and these other groups can be racist. And it's aggravating. It's frustrating. I think I respect his VGQ, but I personally think he is an agent and he's being, he was told to call up and make those assumptions and just cause confusion on the line. But people like myself, I've been listening to Mr. Fuller. I read his book. I have all three of his books, actually. And um, I understand the concept of racism because it's rooted in policies that dominate in all nine areas of activity. I just want to say that, and I'm going to just take my figure off the line and continue to listen. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bobby and Mr. Bullitt. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your call, uh, Sean, and don't be a stranger. Um, let me say this before I get to Ben and, uh, or, and, um, and Dante. Um, let me tell you something. Uh, Scott actually added to the program. Uh, it was very good because this is not a, a, a social club. You, you, you need to have that type of interaction so that we know exactly where we are going, where we were at. Uh, maybe we there. Maybe there's some things we don't understand. But as Mr. Fuller has stated, and even in your personal life. If you have a problem, you need to ask questions. You need so that you can get the answer to those questions. So you know, you you want to jump on? Okay, you can. But his comments are necessary. Did Mr. Fuller jump on him? No, he didn't jump on him at all. He listened to what he said and thought, well, maybe there's something I'm missing. So so I'm just saying. Don't jump on Scott. I'm not a, a, agreeing or disagreeing with Scott, but his comments are necessary for us to get to where we need to be. Okay, we have about 16 minutes, and I got, oh, man, okay, let me do this. Uh, let's do this. Let's go to, I'm going to get to you, Dante, and I'm going to get to you, Ben, because you guys have already been there, but this person hasn't. Le, uh, Leona, what is your question for Mr. Fuller? Greetings, um, Mr. Fuller. Um, here's the deal. I, I'm curious. Well, well first of all, I want to I want to thank you for uh, modeling 
your behavior of practicing the code. You know, I I, I appreciate how you uh, you know you, you try to get 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 in the question lane and handle the questions and th- thank you for for modeling that behavior of how to stay on code. I'm I'm still yes. learning. Yes. Now listen, <laughs> Mr. Fuller, I want to know something. Um, what what can a person do to get over their fear of people who classify themselves as white? Now, uh, in your word guide, you, you define fear as, uh, quote, uh, to apply to the absence of knowledge and or understanding of how to compensate for the lack of knowledge and or understanding. Okay. I ain't clear on what that means, but my question to you, sir, is um, what what can a person do to get over their fear of people who classify themselves as white? Okay. Mr. Fuller? Knowing what to do. Just what the the instruction says about what to do about mm-hmm. fear. Mm-hmm. Knowing what to do and what not to do. This is how you overcome fear, knowing what to do. A baby will stick its hand in fire if the baby doesn't know the nature of fire. But once the baby knows that fire will burn, that that doesn't feel good. That's all the baby knows. The baby has never heard the word burn. But the baby felt something that was uncomfortable. <clears throat> So the baby says, oh, that's, you know, the baby sticks his hand in water and doesn't get that same reaction. A lot of babies like water because they're born in water, okay? That might be the reason for that. It's a reason for everything. But the baby sees fire, sees the burner on the stove, and the baby reaches up and says, you know, that's a light of some type or something. And I'm going to see if I can grab it. And it's hot. So the baby fears that, okay? But the baby learns, and many years later, to become a firefighter. Because the baby learned about how to fight fires, which I don't particularly care for that word, fire, firefighter. I like to think of the word as being fire controller, all right? You're not really fighting the fire. Fire serves constructive purposes like any other tool, or fire can be horrendously non-constructive. But if you know how to control fire, you don't fear fire. And it's the same way. If you understand the system of white supremacy, the more understanding you have, the less fearful you are, the less Barney Barney Fife, you might say, type character, that comic character that was on television some years ago and on reruns. You know, Don Knotts was the actor that played the part of Barney Fife, somebody who was always jittery. And fearful of everything, eyes bugged. Well, there are depictions of black people, eyes bugged, fearful, because they don't understand how to what? Control what is happening to them. And so that's what I wrote the book for, how to gain this control. The more you understand how something works, like fire and like water, the less fearful you are in answer to the question. So if you understand the mind of the white supremacists, you know you begin to understand what they are going to do before they do it. The more you know about that, the less fearful you are. That's just the nature of the universe. You fear that which you cannot control. Once you learn how to control something, like the first people, I, I guess, who saw a lion. And that lion started tearing people apart. 
But then over a period of time, people learn to make spears and things like that and whips and fire, the use of fire. I mean, they'll draw, make a fire around a person, and then the lion that would approach the person to eat the person would not approach the person because the person had fire at the end of some wood called a torch, and he fanned it in front of the lion, and the lion felt the heat and backed off. They probably discovered that, you know, probably inadvertently. I don't know. I don't know how that evolved. I wasn't there. But that could have happened. And so the person became less fearful of the lion, so much so that many of them later on became what you call lion trainers or lion tamers. And you would go to things called circuses, and you would see a person crack a whip, and a lion would stand on his hind legs and nod his head in tribute to the lion tamer. So it's the same way in dealing with racism. You want to, at best, find out the formula or the code for taming that system of white supremacy and then evolving it and the people who practice it into a different type of people if they're going to be here on the planet with us and become themselves non-destructive people of people of color, that they don't put the emphasis on it and put their emphasis on something else other than that as the criteria for running the universe. Okay. Thank you, Leona, for your uh, call, and don't be a uh, stranger. Okay. Uh, Let's see here. Let's go to Ben. Uh, What is your uh, question for Mr. Fuller? Yes, Mr. Bobby. So I called earlier and I asked a question, but I'm pretty sure you didn't get the question. Uh, So I called back. I'm calling back to ask the question again. Yeah, go ahead. So my question is, Mr. Porter, Mr. Porter says that we do now understand racism, what it is and how it works. Everything else we understand will definitely confuse us. That's for sure. So as uh, as an African, uh, uh, someone who's classified as a black African person from the continent, I um, I I had some questions about what can we do, we as the young folks, um, black Africans in the U.S. who have come here and have seen how the system operates to a certain degree, how can we uh, – impact some of our some of the folks back home to understand that this is a global system we are working with here and this system is the cause for our global collective oppression what can we how can we approach that without being without sounding like we are on some sort of propaganda warfare or so okay that is your question okay mr fuller yes, sir. have exercises in communication Just as we are having right this minute, let everybody voice their opinion about what their problems are. And here again, I go to, and this was one of the interests in the textbook, one of the last interests. And I talked to, I'll just tell the audience this, I talked to Dr. Wilson about it when I thought about it. At the last minute, I added this to the revised expanded edition of the 2016 edition, the latest edition of the textbook for victims of white supremacy. And it's page 171 and 172. And those four things, you ask yourself, what do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? How do you plan to do it? And what do you expect the constructive result to be? Now, it didn't mention a thing about racism. And those four questions. And you can ask an answer to your question without even talking about racism. You can go anywhere on the planet. And anybody that you're talking to, anywhere you happen to be, 
you can start off the conversation with addressing those four wants. Because ultimately, in answer to that last question out of those four wants, W-A-N-T-S, you're talking about wants, what do you expect the constructive result to be from whatever you are doing? What's the constructive result? And if everything that black people do, including in what we call Africa, produces a constructive result, you are automatically fighting and eroding and destroying the system of white supremacy. Rather than go to those beer taverns, or rather go to the beer tavern, and while you're right. sipping the beer, ask yourself, where did this beer idea come from? Ask yourself questions, because all problems are solved through the process of questions and answers. Right. Where did this soda pop okay. come from? And is it having a constructive result on my body? That's the last question. Okay. Out of those ones. I wanted right, to come Dante, into this beer tank. Uh, I'd rather, uh, Ben, I'm going to have to go because I have one more uh, call. Thank you for calling, yes, and, and don't be yes, a stranger. Sir. Okay. Uh, last and call, have Dante. Read the textbook. Okay. Uh, last caller, Dante, you got about two minutes. Go ahead with your question, please. All right. I just wanted to quickly say I uh, I applaud your work, Mr. Fuller, and especially in, uh, you know, regarding your conversation with Scott, like uh, the anxiety that came up for me in listening to how he approached the situation from a very supremacist idea of viewpoint of his ideas and things like that. I found that you, you handled that discourse very well. And like, I appreciate your example. Also, I made a Reddit page, r slash produce justice, a Reddit subreddit, um, so people can communicate and talk about the book and have a conversations and discourse and share thoughts and ideas. So I wanted to share that on the show as well, Dr. Fuller. And uh, my question for you was kind of in regard to what someone asked earlier is just uh, like, how do you, like, how is it that you come to manage the anxiety that comes up in dealing with? Uh, racists and white supremacists and, and in general with people like that uh, because you, you always have such a calm demeanor uh, is like like I guess can you talk us through like how, how can we be more like you in our conversations okay thank you so much thank you so much Dante Mr. Fuller well Go ahead the idea is not to be like Neely Fuller don't follow Neely Fuller anywhere I mean Neely Fuller makes a lot of mistakes all right but you follow logic. And what is logic? The best way to get to logical and constructive conclusions. The process is always, always, without exception, questions and answers, questions and answers, questions and answers. You you don't move out of the question lane, and you get an answer to every question. And the, the technique, a part of the codified process is, Don't move to the second question if the first question has not been answered. You want that first question answered in order to what? Minimize or eliminate what? Fusion. Fusion. But Mm. just stay in the question lane. And, And if you just keep asking questions and getting answers to the questions, it'll take everybody right where they ought to be. That's just the science of the universe. Okay. It might not take everybody where they want to be, but it'll take everybody where they should be. It's All right. never fail. Thank you, That's Mr. the basis Fuller. for everything that I've written. Okay. And thank you, Dante, for your call. And again, don't be a stranger. Okay. Thank you, callers, for all your outstanding calls. The dialogue was just excellent. Sorry we didn't get a chance to read any uh, Gmails today, but we will. Hopefully next week. Uh, don't forget tomorrow on Point West or on TalkTamingRadio.com from 9 to 11, we'll have Dr. Francis Cress Welsing's voice and Almer Johnson. You might want to do that. But don't forget here, ProduceJustice.com to get the book and also to be able to speak with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Mr. Fuller, thank you so much. My technicians and all, thank you. And we will hopefully get a chance 
to speak to you next week. This has been the Counter Racist Coach Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. and Mr. Bobby as co-host. We'll see you next week.